Okay, so to start, what is a flexible joint? A flexible joint is also commonly known in the industry as expansion joints. Uh, so keep that in mind that in AutoPipe, the component that we use is called a flexible joint, but it's the same as an expansion joint, uh, which I'm sure many of you use that terminology. I've read that there are some other names for it, but I think those would probably be the two most common. So from Wikipedia, an expansion joint is an assembly designed to hold parts together while safely absorbing temperature-induced expansion and contraction of building materials and also vibration or to allow movement due to ground settlement or seismic activity. So expansion joints can be used in many industries and situations as shown here in these images with some metallic piping expansion joints. We have a bridge expansion joint and a flexible hose type of expansion joint. And in piping, specifically expansion joints are often used in high temperature situations where thermal growth needs to be limited so that the thermal stresses don't become too large. They can also help mitigate by, uh, mechanical vibration. Pipe expansion joints can be made of metal, plastic, fabric, or rubber, but we will be focusing on metallic expansion joints uh, here today. Expansion joints are commonly used in areas with limited space. A hard pipe expansion loop would be able to absorb the thermal expansion to alleviate the stresses due to high temperatures and would commonly be the first option, uh, arguably be the first option, if possible, because hard pipe is more economical in the long run and requires less maintenance. Expansion joints also have a low cycle fatigue life, so hard piping is usually a safer option in potentially lethal situations such as a hot steam line. Uh, however, there are many instances where there is not enough space to insert a pipe loop large enough to supply the necessary flexibility, or you may have other reasons why you decide or choose to use an expansion joint, um, but not enough space is a common reason why the need for expansion joints uh, arises. We're going to explore some different types of expansion joints, uh, but let's just first take a look at a piping model to look at thermal growth. So as mentioned, expansion joints are primarily used to manage thermal growth. And there's no stopping the pipe from growing thermally. Rather, our goal is to direct it in a way that helps us to manage the stresses, the loads, and the deflections by defining a path of least resistance within our piping system. And this is going to be the most flexible area of the piping. And here I'm going to open a model of piping. So in this piping model, we just have a very simple pipe. If we look at our input grid here, we see we have some 500 degree Fahrenheit temperature, three, about 350 PSI pressure. And we have uh, hard piping throughout the whole model. We have some rigid supports, guides and vertical supports along the piping, but we have some variable spring hangers here that are we're allowing the program to define for us uh, to, to pick the correct spring uh, figure and size for us from a manufacturer's catalog. So just looking at this, knowing that it's fairly hot, that when we run the analysis, and very simple analysis, just gravity, temperature, pressure, and when we run this analysis, uh, we could pretty much look at this and, and determine, you know, in what ways is this flexible? Well, first of all, I mean, this area is more flexible because we have springs and that is the entire, you know, purpose of putting in our springs is that it does allow it to grow thermally. So we're allowing it to move, you know, upwards along these vertical sections here. The other way that it's flexible is that we do have guides and and vertical support. So we're keeping the pipe up. We're stop, trying to stop it from moving laterally along that long line, um, but we're not stopping any axial growth. So we, we can grow this way out of here, nothing stopping that, and we can grow this way along this long line of pipe, nothing is, is stopping that, right? Except for the very end anchors. So when we talk about a gravity load, it's a easy thing to resolve because we have a load, it's pushing down, we can do something to keep it up. When we talk about a thermal load, it's it's not so easy that you can't eliminate the thermal load. You just have to, and the thermal deflection, the thermal growth, you just have to figure out a way to uh, help it grow in the, the way that is the best way possible where you're not overloading, overstressing your piping system. So we run our analysis, Again, just gravity, temperature, pressure, uh, and we review our results. Let's take a look at our displacement uh, in the thermal case. 
And what we see is exactly that, that growth that we talked about, that the thermal growth is finding a way, the path of least resistance to grow, to expand as it goes from 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is an exaggerated plot in Autopipe, but we can look at actual numbers here using our dialog, and we can see the main growth is about two inches in the X direction, uh, about one inch in the Z direction. So again, growth in this direction, growth in this direction, based on the fact that nothing is stopping it from moving in that direction. We have growth over here, um, up by this spring, some vertical and X direction growth. So the springs allow the pipe to move up, which is great because we have an anchor right here, so that's good. And we have the axial growth along this long, uh, you know, X direction line as well. If we look at our code stresses, we don't have any overstressing. Uh, if I look specifically here, this is looking at the expansion case here, uh, and we don't have overstressing, but we have some, you know, up towards 0.9 uh, ratio compared to our allowable of code stress in the expansion case, because there is a lot of growth occurring within these two rigid anchor points, but we are allowing it to, to grow. So let's take this, uh, we're gonna kind of work, work with this model and take it another step further. So if I come and turn on, I have a couple of segments modeled in here, so let's turn them on one by one. This is segment A. If I turn on segment B, all I've done in segment B is I've taken away just this small section of of piping. Well, this small section of piping is doing a lot for us flexibly. Uh, it's allowing the pipe much more flexibility than when you take out that small section of piping. And now everything is in the, everything horizontal, right, is in the X direction. So we don't have any bend over here to take some thermal growth, which we had previously. And so we may run into some issues. We probably will run into some issues. Everything's growing this way and this way, and that's gonna cause some problems. We have some upward growth, the springs are allowing that, but other than that, everything's along the one axis. So if we run the analysis again, and we review our stress results, we'll do it for thermal. We now see that we have, uh, the red means that we're over a ratio of one, so we're over stressed. Uh, so let's look at the displacement plot for thermal. We can animate it. And I mean, we see that we've very clearly see that this looks similar because we have a similar thing going on, but this ability for this pipe to grow in this direction is now gone. It's just stopped there. It's a rigid anchor. So that's what's causing that overstressing there. So what can we do? We can use, um, if we could maybe model our configuration a little bit differently and add hard pipe flexibility by adding in a, a deeper or more or another expansion loop, a Z bend, or maybe putting the original bend back in, we can allow flexibility. But if we can't and we have a pipe like this, uh, we can use some expansion joints. So if I turn on my C segment, that's just what I've done here. Uh, we have the same pipe, but we've added some expansion joints here. We'll talk more about the specific types of expansion joints in just a moment, but these expansion joints, what we've allowed is just a Y bending stiffness released. So it's just taking bending in one plane in this vertical section of pipe. And hopefully this allows for the flexibility that we need so that we can accommodate the thermal growth. So again, if we analyze this and we look at coach stresses, thermal, we see that we were able to dissipate the thermal stresses in this pipe by like a ton, right? Where we have really, really low stress values now thermally throughout this piping. Basically a ratio of zero throughout, very, very low. So that's great. That's what the expansion joints have allowed us to do. We could assume these are maybe like two hinge expansion joints working together. The pipe is guided nicely, um, but let's look at the displacement. If we do our thermal growth here and say, okay, you know, we see some uh, decent displacement throughout that vertical section of pipe where those expansion joints are allowing that, that movement. If I actually come in here and look at the start and end of my expansion joints, I know this is, might be tough to see, so I'll just kind of do the quick math myself here. 
my Y and Z are staying the same. So we only have displacement from the start point to the end point in the X direction. And it's about an inch. So we're going from uh, at the top point, 1.209 inches in the X direction to 0.273. So about an inch difference from the top and the bottom. So, you know, that's what's going on with that expansion joint. If I go down to the other expansion joint, same thing about an inch difference between the top and the bottom of the joint. So is that okay? You have to go back to your manufacturer's expansion joint guidelines and make sure that that type of deflection is okay. It could be a bit high. So if it is, then you would need to work a bit more. If I needed to work a bit more, there are many different types of expansion joints that you can use. So this is just one example of a configuration. But in this example, let's just say that I want to maybe support the axial direction, the z x direction of this stress with a line stop in order to kind of limit the, m the movement on those hinge joints, the, the movement, uh, the bending movement on that, those hinge joints. So if I go back here to my code stresses, I can see that even in the first straight pipe, I don't have any high thermal stresses really happening here. They're just occurring over here. So if I put a line stop somewhere along this, you know, will it really cause any issues? That's what I'm gonna test out in the next segment. So if I turn on my last segment, segment D, I have now the same exact model as segment C, except I've put a line stop here and I've kept it as zero gap line stop to try to bring down the X direction movement that's happening at these expansion joints. So if I run this again, one last time here. Again, I'll look at my code stresses. Now that's really important because I'm trying to see, you know, when I put this line stop in, am I causing high thermal stresses here because this pipe is trying to grow and I'm stopping it. And no, that didn't really cause many issues here throughout this section of pipe. So the next thing I wanna do is look at my displacement. And if I look at the thermal displacement here, you can just see right away that, you know, the it's a difference in the animation of, of how much that those expansion joints are bending. And when I stop it and take a look further and look at the actual numbers, I can see that I go from 1.209 to 0.894. So I've now brought it down from an inch of that, you know, displacement from the top to the bottom of the expansion joint to about 0.3 inches. So I brought it down quite a lot and have much of a, a better chance of, you know, satisfying the design displacement criteria of the expansion joint itself. So this is just an example of, very simple example of looking at thermal growth and, and the fact that we cannot get rid of it, we can't eliminate it. If the pipe is that hot, it's that hot. Um, if the thermal range is that vast, it's that vast. So we just need to be able to control it. We need to be able to find a way to add flexibility to our piping systems so that the, the growth that is occurring doesn't cause overstressing, overloading, over displacing in our uh, piping systems. All right, so let's go back and let's explore some different types of expansion joints. So we're gonna take a look at single untied, single tied expansion joints, hinge expansion joints, uh, gimbal expansion joints, slip joints, tied universal joints, ball and socket joints, and pressure balance joints. And if you're not aware, AutoPipe does have a workbook available that has recommended modeling approaches for different types of components. And one of these types of components is a flexible joint. So this shows on the right a list of the modeling approaches available that we kind of guide you through an example of modeling the flexible joint and which inputs should be changed versus which ones should not be changed and also some general guidelines. So we'll talk more about what it does guide you to do and what you are responsible for doing in inputting a flexible joint. 